Winston Churchill wrote in his book, The Second World War, a significant portion of our whole war effort had been devoted to combating the mine. A vast output of material and money was diverted from other tasks, and many men risked their lives night and day in the minesweepers alone. During the latter part of World War II, the U.S. deployed over 500 minesweepers in the Pacific alone to combat Japanese sea mining efforts. That's more minesweeping ships than the number of U.S. naval battleships, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and submarines combined. Germany was the first belligerent to deploy magnetically triggered sea mines in October 1939. These were countered by the introduction of magnetic minesweeping gear and ship degaussing systems. Acoustically triggered mines were then introduced by the Germans around 13 months later in November of 1940. The Allies frantically scrambled to counter these types of mines. The intent of this video is to review typical World War II acoustic mine features, how they work, countermeasures adopted, and the Japanese reaction to U.S. acoustics mine seeded during Operation Starvation. This video topic links well with the channel's videos covering World War II sea mines purpose classifications, combat effectiveness, and magnetic sea mines and their countermeasures. These videos reside in the channel's sea mine and sea mine countermeasures playlist. The Germans had perfected contact type sea mines during World War I, as discussed on this page from a 1946 Bureau of Ordnance document on German sea mines of World War II. However, the Allies had effective countermeasures to these types of mines. So, in 1923, the Germans started development on influence type mines, starting with the magnetically triggered mine. The Germans assumed the British had already perfected magnetic mine countermeasures like magnetic minesweepers and ship degaussing systems given they were first to develop these types of mines. Given this erroneous assumption, the Germans in 1938 started development of acoustically triggered sea mines. Their planted magnetic mines were a success though, as the British had no effective mine countermeasures and would not for another six months. During the six-month window, the Germans slowed their acoustic mine development until May of 1940. At this time, development of an acoustically triggered mine was given highest priority. By September 1940, their first acoustically triggered mine, the A-1, was ready for operational deployment. Other units soon followed. This table lists German acoustic mine triggers adopted in World War II. The columns represent the acoustic trigger's name, military branch deploying the mine, mine's name, and mine as moored or bottom type. This image shows the A1 acoustic trigger unit. The unit was recovered by the British one month after its initial deployment. The trigger is to detonate the mine when the ship approaches its location and the mine must not be set off by underwater explosions. This page from a 1944 Office of Naval Intelligence document on mine warfare outlines features of acoustic mines. Underwater sounds can come from a ship's engine, propellers, and disturbances from a moving ship's hull in contact with water. This sound travels far in water at around four times the speed than in air. An acoustic sensor microphone will pick up these sounds. When the sound's characteristics reach a preset level, the mine will detonate. The mine's acoustic trigger can be tuned to the type of ship or submarine target expected. A ship's propeller sound will fan out, like seen in this image. This image shows features of an acoustic mine. The battery is here, detonator here, and acoustic trigger circuit open and circuit closed. There is no way to mask or muffle a ship's acoustic signature, like degaussing a ship to reduce its magnetic signature. A detonating bottom mine will lift the ship and break its back. This page from a 1972 Naval Ordnance Laboratory document on sea mines against Japan summarizes information collected during Operation Starvation. Of the 12,053 mines deployed, 41% were magnetically triggered, 29% acoustic, 24% pressure magnetic combination, and 6% low frequency acoustic. In order for an acoustic mine to trigger, the sound level must meet the acoustic trigger's frequency, intensity, and duration. From a 1945 mine identification manual, these levels and durations can be set based on the mine's intended target. This page from a May 1945 21st Bomber Command document outlines mine seeding guidance during Operation Starvation. 20% of the mines to be magnetically triggered and 70% to be acoustically triggered by the A3 and A5 devices. The A3's triggers to be set to 60% normal, 30% medium, and 10% coarse. A coarse acoustic trigger will detonate the mine over a wider sound spectrum to cover more ships but be easier to sweep. This page from a 1944 U.S. Navy Mine Disposal Handbook outlines characteristics in a cutaway of the Mark 25C mine, the most common mine deployed during Operation Starvation. It is a ground induction trigger type mine, aircraft deployed with parachute. Targets include ships at depths between 40 and 100 feet. Acoustically triggered mines were not tuned to target Japanese submarines. 
The mine is 86 inches in length, 22.5 inches in diameter, and its weight is 1,980 pounds when filled with 1,250 pounds of Torpax. The mine's microphone is located here. This page provides additional characteristics and a view of the mine's A5 acoustic trigger. The mine will be armed when it reaches a depth of 16 feet and submerged for 45 minutes. It may contain a 145-day sterilizer for safety. The mine sensitivity switch position is located here. This map shows the mine density from the seeding of a Japanese waterway during four of the Operation Starvation B-29 missions from an August 1945 21st Bomber Command directive memo. The larger circles represent the M25 mines and the trigger type distributions discussed earlier. The mines are laid in straight lines since they were aircraft dropped. The Germans responded to British magnetic countermeasures by adding anti-sweeping features and more complex triggers, as discussed on this page from a 1991 Naval History Center document on mine warfare. They added ship counters, which led up to 16 ships pass safely over the mine, and then the mine would trigger. This feature was designed to trick minesweepers into declaring a waterway zone safe. A ship's acoustic signature is difficult to reduce or muffle. The British developed underwater noisemakers attached to the sweepers, which would detonate the mines at a safe distance. This page discusses acoustic mine countermeasure challenges. Acoustic mines were developed by all World War II belligerents at around the same time. Ships cannot reduce their sound profile like they can reduce their magnetic profile by degaussing. A ship's acoustic profile is tied to its propulsion system. They would need to travel slowly to defeat the mine, which is impractical. Minesweepers can produce loud artificial sounds which match a ship's sound profile. This can be done with banging systems or underwater explosions. This list from a 1979 book on minesweeping in World War II outlines various British noisemakers used to detonate acoustically triggered sea mines. This includes Kango, electronic jackhammer banging on an internal portion of the ship. This image shows a World War II vintage Kango electronically powered jackhammer. This image illustrates mine countermeasures based on the mine's trigger from a 1951 Popular Science magazine article. A crewman bangs against a steel plate with a Kango jackhammer attached to the ship's hull. This sends a loud sound at a set frequency ahead of the ship, triggering the mine. A Fessenden oscillator banging on a flooded bow section. This system was used in destroyers. This image shows the Type C Mark I Fessenden oscillator mounted on a sweeper. The oscillator bangs against here. This area was flooded with water to enhance the sound produced. Hand grenades thrown over the sides of the ship. Machine gun fire into the water. This proved effective. A Kango box, which can be lowered into the water at the ship's bow. This image shows a Kango acoustic hammer system in the up and stowed position on a minesweeper. The system was called the Kango acoustic sweep. The goal of these SA or sweep acoustic devices is to emit a sound similar to characteristics and intensity of a ship's engine and or propeller which would detonate the mine at a safe distance from the ship. The Kango hammer box is lowered into the water at a depth of 6 feet. The Kango hammer would be actuated by a 240 volt electrical system. The hammer pounds against an 18 inch forward facing percussion plate. The loud sound generated from the system would usually detonate a sea mine 200 yards or more ahead of the ship. This image shows a Kango hammer's 18 inch diameter forward facing percussion plate. This chart outlines the distance ahead of a boat where a detonating mine would cause ship damage based on the mine's explosive fill weight. Mines detonating at a distance of 250 feet or greater from the ship would cause no ship damage. This is well beyond the Kango Hammer 600 foot mine trigger distance. By the end of the war, Japan developed somewhat effective mine sweeping systems except for low frequency acoustic and pressure triggered mines, as discussed in this 1946 USSBS document on sea mines against Japan. However, their minesweeping efforts were insufficient to meet the demands placed by the 12,000 influenced mines planet during Operation Starvation. U.S. acoustic mines were cleared by explosive charges. They also dragged nets across the seafloor to catch mines for disarming or detonation. This page from a 1946 U.S. Navy technical document on Japanese minesweeping gear describes Japan's only acoustic mine countermeasure, a sound bomb. There were six types of sound bombs used. A group of three to five of these bombs would be dropped overboard at two second intervals between the groups. This places the groups around 200 meters apart for a sweeper traveling at four knots. A single centerline pass should be adequate to clear a channel. 
This tactic would detonate 50% of the mines fitted with the A3 acoustic trigger, but not effective against the A5 triggered mines. At war's end, Japan was aware of their deficiency in sweeping acoustic triggered mines. They were frantically working on more effective acoustic mine countermeasures, as listed in this table. If you found this acoustic mine video interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.